Amen. And that's why Paul says in Philippians 3 8. Philippians 3 8. That yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I might gain Christ. That he suffered many things so that he might gain Christ. Right? The Bible says uh, Jesus was giving a parable that the kingdom of God is like a precious pearl. Right? You, you sell everything to get that pearl. Right? You suffer. You get that lost. All the other things that you had, you sell it. That's a loss. So that you might gain that pearl. The same way, Paul was like counted every fleshly nature, all the degree, everything. He said like, it's all lost. So that I might gain Christ. I might gain him. Right? So, through the suffering, through the persecution, through the trials, God does something miraculous in our life. Right? And that can be achieved only through the suffering. That can be achieved only when we go through the trials and temptations. And God will shape our life so that it will become a blessing not only for ourselves but for all others. So he said that I suffered the loss of all things so that I may gain Christ. Right? I, I might gain Christ. There, there's something like he's talking in some terms of business, right? I'm, I've lost one thing, but I've gained something else. So there are things that, that even in our lives that we might be boasting about, we might be treasuring that as something great in our life. To be like our family background or I'm, I belong to this caste or I work in this company or whatever, right? It's all temporary, like all those boasting will stop when, when we finish, once we finish the life on earth, we cannot boast beyond that. But Paul is saying that I'm gaining Christ so that it is going to be there for eternity. It is not going to stop you, right? You, once you gain Christ, once you gain this character, it is going to be there reflecting the glory in eternity. <laughs> Every trial, every uh, uh, struggle, every opportunity where we are suffering is an opportunity for gaining Christ more in our life. Here, we can see that in the life of David. Also. He said in Psalm uh, 73 25, Whom I have in heaven but you, but there is, not, there is none upon earth that I desire besides you. Psalm, my flesh and my heart fail because it's all temporary. Right? But I gain, gain God, gain Christ so that. Whom I have in heaven but you. So he wanted to gain God more in this life on this earth so that he knows that who is going to be there even after this life on earth. See the way he's saying, there is none upon earth that I desire besides you. Which means that he's gaining God, gaining Christ. I desire you more on this earth. Right? Like the way Paul said, so that I might gain Christ. Nothing else, not of my fleshly accomplishment, nothing. I might gain Christ. The same way David is also saying, I might know God more on this earth. Right? So that when you are like, enter heaven, I, I, I know you, right? I, 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 like it's not odd for me. It's something different. I know you more on this life on this earth so that even in eternity, I might continue to know you more. Well, we can see that in one of the instances in the life of David, 2 Samuel 16, 5 uh, to 9. So he, here we see a situation where David is running for his life because of his son Absalom and, uh, and Shimei, right, from uh, ben, Benjamin uh, or, or from the house of Saul, right? So he um, he came to curse David, I don't know, probably what, what, because like Saul died, who's a Benjamite, and then he came to Judah, again they were all boasting in their flesh, right, like uh, my clan, my tribe. So he, were, he wanted to curse uh, David, and and then one of his commanders, he said like, what is this dead dog cursing my king? Let's kill him. Let's finish him off. Why he has to, why he has to even say anything about the king, right? And then David is stopping him, and, and, and he said like uh, in the 10th verse, it may be that 12th verse, it may be that the Lord will look on my affliction, and that the Lord will repay me with good for his cursing this day. It's a, it's a tremendous attitude of David. He is a king, still a king, he has so much army still walking with him. You would have killed that guy. Finish him up. Right? But he took that as an opportunity to gain God's approval. He said like, these many people are against me, but God will look on my situation and you will show mercy on me. See, just think of us in that situation. Right? And already had a strong, tremendous tension. Running for life. Right? And what this mosquito is doing? <laughs> Kill Why do? Why do you carry this another burden? Right? But he is, his, his focus was, David's focus was, I am under stress. I am under distress. I am under tension. Whom I should seek now? I need God. I need God's approval, I need God's grace and mercy. It is not about showing my flesh, showing my strength. His flesh and strength is kill that guy. Right? That's his flesh. But he did not do that and he said, let me seek God during this time of trial when I'm running for my life because of my own son. 
I want to get God's approval. I want to get God's mercy and let Him look on my affliction, my state, how I am. Because if you are taken, if you are killed that guy, then God, God might not have not moved in the situation because he is trying to defend himself to his flesh. But still he is seeking God in that adverse situation and, and asking God to help him during that time. And because of the nature, see, there are, there are many things that David went through. But because he responded to God in the right way, he was protected, he was safeguarded from all the situations. So like this, in our life, there will be opportunities for us to show flesh. There will be opportunities to show fear. There will be opportunities to show frustration. But in all that situation, when you choose God, when, when the overwhelming pressure comes on you, are you running into a, 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 a separate room where you go and just fall prostrate before God and say, Lord, I cannot take it anymore. Right? Are we coming to that kind of a state? Or are we trying to defend ourselves? Are we trying to show our flesh and frustration the, the way that any anybody else could have done? 